going red, you know, to see what's happening. It says it's locked. I think it might be locked. So, I think it's working. We'll find out shortly. Hey, hey, hello! Welcome to the here, show. I never did push the button. You never did push the button? Well, you can push your button now. It's all good. Your button is just giving us a hard copy in case the YouTube fails. But uh, it looks like it's working. I got a screen over here that says it's working. How about that? So, uh, chat room, let us know how we sound. I hope we sound as good as we look. Because, damn, we got some fine looking gentlemen here today. <laughs> Jordan's in the house. Say hello, Jordan. Hello. Hey, hey. Lieutenant Dan is behind the camera. And uh, we're having a good time. We're wrapping and raking today. But before we begin, I want to thank the sponsors. I want you to check out VancouverSeedBank.ca to get all your seedy needs taken care of. I want to thank Kind Selections. I want to thank Shatterbeard, yeah. Beard Brothers. I want to thank Skunk and Panda. I want to thank Valley Pure. Best extracts in Canada. You can get it in the mail. I want to thank Aim Kilns. I want to thank Remo Nutrients. Tim Powers Glass. And I've got a new sponsor to take a minute to tell you about, Griffin Glass Tools. Stoked about that. They make the dankest foot pedals and the dankest tools. This is this is the best foot pedal on the market, folks. Uh, so I'll be doing Griffin Glass uh, Tech Video of the Month coming up. And that's pretty exciting. So I'm now a Canadian distributor for Griffin Tools. If you need any of that, let me know. Uh, and last but not least, <coughs> Got me beer sponsor, 12 Kings Pub in Vancouver, 12th and Kingsway. They're good folks, tell them I say hi. So, uh, Lieutenant Dan has raised an army. We shall, the army rolled in, that's what he said. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> I'm just gonna spark one of these off. Uh, kill home fill, thanks Gremlin, I forgot about that. Kill the squeaky fucking home fill. No one's having sex on a rusty bed. Let's just have a look at behind the scenes. This is what makes all my oxygen. Uh, right now this concentrator is running uh, the center fire for, oh it's running your bowl bread, Max. It is. I guess you don't use the bottom plate. I don't right now. It's only a 10 LPM so it goes up to probably 8, you know, realistically flow. Uh, this is another uh, 10 LPM underneath the home fill and there's a five and a underneath the home fill. So I fill two tanks here, two tanks there, and I switch back and forth because uh, I drain them pretty quick with this big torch. So hey, that's a nicer sound, eh? And the new exhaust is much quieter. It's pretty awesome. Let's look at the exhaust. It's not very complete yet. And it is a, it's slightly rudimentary, but it's pretty good. There is a hood. This is the hood. It's like a wooden hood with the lights inside. The uh, exhaust is kind of pointed upwards. It's flexible because it's really cold here. So I take it out at night and I close the window. This is half of the intake and it's kind of just directed down. There's cold air just blasting through here. This goes about 20 feet that way with a 10 inch inline fan. And uh, it works pretty good. There's another huge intake in the other room. Actually the fireplace is basically what it is, the old shop. And uh, so that works pretty good. It actually doesn't get too cold in here. I'm also in the basement of my house. Uh, it's way better than a small shed outbuilding. It's been a little bit brutal the past week or so for everyone in the Canadian uh, glass scene. Fucking cold. Gremlin, how's your shop doing? You got heaters in there? I hear uh, the radiant heaters, the quartz heaters are pretty good. You put those overhead. The uh, infrared heat is what you want. Anyway, I'm gonna spark this up and we'll talk about what we're gonna do today. Let's pull out the... So these are all Christmas gifts for my family. I'm not quite done yet. I think I gotta make 28 for uh, all my immediate families. And then I'm gonna make another 28 for my friends. And then I might make another 28 for, uh, for sale. So stay tuned. Or contact me if you think you are either that friend or that family or that stranger in the dark who wants to get a cup. I kind of like this design. Oh yeah, off the top I wanted to thank Sibo, Ivory Island Glass, who taught me how to do this technique. I don't know who taught him, he went for a lesson down in the States back in 97, 98. 
and uh, I learned soon after that. Uh, it's a fun technique. It's not easy. I noticed a lot of the new glass artists don't do this stuff. Uh, maybe they just can't. So I'm here to show you how, in case you were curious. But yeah, that, that ventilation works pretty good. Smoke goes right up into it. A little smoke test. A little bit of turbulence <coughs> with this here. And I intend on piping this down and out a little bit further. Uh, good intentions, you know. So that, and also it can be piped up into the bench is always a good idea. Need to get a couple smoke bombs. Yeah, <laughs> well that's what this is, man. All natural smoke bombs. It's organic. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. The trail and rank design. I'll just set those there. Let me just check the chat room. How's everyone doing? Sounding okay? Seems to be working. It's working. How's that doing? Amazing. It always amazes me when this shit works. I had a, I put up a, the event page ahead of time. According to Gremlin's orders, I will have that up a day or two early next week. Hey ho! Hey ho, Captain Gremlin. Prep for the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I grabbed out a few colors just out of my shorts. I have no idea what this is. We'll punch you up to that. Uh, we'll punch you up to a couple little bits of colors. Uh, when I was made, I just kind of, I used some uh, lemon drop, some cads, some yellows. You can do that with a GTT, and not quite as easy with the red max. It tends to boil your colors. Yeah, so way out hard on the oxygen. Yes, and I do too. I do too. I, that's exactly. I go high oxygen, and I work out here with the cadmiums. Uh, by cadmiums, I mean the the crayon yellow, orange, reds. If you got a fussy torch, you're going to be working more with the uh, warm yellows and the. Uh, and the ruby reds, or the garnets, or the uh, Elvises. Yeah, the Elvises Talk are to great. Vagabond. The Elvises are yeah. really good. Yeah. So, any kind of striking red or orange is good. Oh yeah, don't forget to check out cannabroadcasting.com. They've got this show and other fine cannabis-related shows, like the Smoker's Guide uh, channel. I think Pottawa is on there. Go check it out. Check it out. Okay, so now I got to pull a point. I was supposed to do this before the show, but I was busy chatting in the chat room and smoking pot. So just uh, increase the plane there with my Griffin Tools foot pedal. Pretty stoked on that new uh, development. So. Hoping to get a new tool to use every month to show you. Well, I will be. I'm going to have a stock. I'm making orders. And uh, we're going to do a tool tech video of uh, how to use that tool, what to use that tool for. We'll try to pick some weird tools as well as normal tools. Try to come up with some ideas. Scott's pretty excited about that. So am I. So there, with trail and rink, it's always, you want to have a nice thick handle. So I heated up a fair amount of glass to pull that point. Um, it just sucks when your handle breaks on you. And also, I like it when it's a little bit thinner than thicker. <laughs> yeah, uh, diameter, not wall thickness. Not that I have to spin these fast like a goblet foot or anything. But at one point, my left hand always gets a little bit numb in the making of these because it's just turning and turning, and especially when it's cold, it gets cramped up. So uh, a lot of things happen at once with this technique. Uh, this technique's been used for thousands of years. I was at a Royal Ontario Museum lately, and they, uh, they, I was going to post up a picture of it. The amazing uh, trail and rake designs. Uh, and you can see the wrap and rake around this glass. And, drag through with either other glass or some kind of tool. So let's start with that. Uh, you can rake, so the wrap, let's start with the wrap. 
uh, a lot of things are happening. First of all, you need the glass that's going to be wrapped upon nice and warm. So generally, you want to keep it in the kiln. You pull it out of the kiln, it's already up to 1,000 degrees uniformly. So I don't have that, I didn't do that, so I'm just going to warm it up in the flame. So this has to be nice and warm to accept, to have the color glass stick to it. If it doesn't stick to it, well, it can spring off. We'll paddle it down to make sure it sticks, but anyway, so you want this to be nice and hot. We're going to do a few of these because there's so much happening at once that uh, you really have to... I'll try to... I'll, I'm going to be talking fast. Okay, so... I always start the trail at the point of this uh, point of the tip of the point. So, and I always try to heat up. I'll go a little more oxygen. Try to heat up about an inch of color just to start. And I'm going to go from here to here with that inch of color. And I'm going to stop at that for a breather. Okay. So here's an inch of glass is hot. Accepting glass is hot. I'll go ahead and tag. Pull away. Oops often need to do it a few times. There we go. Get it started. And now I dip my right hand with the rod into the flame just to keep a consistent thickness of stringer coming off of it. So I usually stop right there for a quick second. And mostly because in my experience, the glass really wants to spring off this slope. So while it's still hot, I just quickly get a, a paddle and I paddle that down. That's what I do. I've lost so many of that end. When you go down this far, the end often pops off. If you've done a really good job, which actually I think I did this time, of sticking it on in the first place, that was hot enough, this was really hot. It doesn't always spring off, but anyway, good tip. So, heating up that background glass as I heat up this. So we'll just go ahead with a light touch, get that started again. So it doesn't have to be turning fast, and now I'm just going to lay it down consistently, just going slowly down the tube. So my left hand has to speed up and slow down to get the diameter of the thread. My right hand needs to dip it in and out of the flame to give me the right thickness of the thread. It's a very combination of factors here. And then I get to the end and I kind of live a little bit thicker line and I tag it right on. Not tag, but I get a little closer, heating up the tube a little bit more. See how I paddled it on there? And I'll go back to the beginning here with my paddle on it, just in case. And I didn't think, I don't think this is gonna spring off, but I just go along and make sure. I've had enough of this. I've done this a few thousand times. <laughs> and sometimes it springs off. Okay, so you can rake with six mil, four mil. You could rake with three mil, 10 mil, whatever you want, really. Um, I prefer six mil. Uh, it doesn't crack when you go into the flame. If you go too big, your rod just cracks every when you go in, uh, breaks off kind of shock resistant because it's so fat. Uh, if it's so thin, it often breaks in your hand. Uh, you cut yourself a lot. I cut myself good this week. That little speck there was a real bleeder. Um, so I kind of go with a six mil. It's a good, safer thickness. I generally use my big flame for this. Now this is the raking. Uh, you can also use a tungsten pick uh, for this. I kind of prefer the clear because you're kind of adding glass. The whole process kind of feels like you're knitting the glass together, like making a little bit of a complex structure, like making it stronger somehow. More structure pressure stronger. So you don't want it too hot, but you want to drag it so that you're pulling the color into like a V shape. If you go too hot, like I did this down here, oops, right there is a little too hot. And uh, it looks like a clear line, like I dragged the color right out of it. The color's there, but, so there's definitely a fine line. I just kind of dance in and out of the flame like this. I'm pushing into the glass, but not too hard. A little bit of pressure, about the same as a pen on paper, really. 
I do. I don't rotate the the rod in my hand. Some people do a slow rotation. You definitely can draw a quicker line with that, but I just don't see it being necessary. Same when I'm trailing on the color. I used to rotate the color, and that's just one more variable you can add to speed up the color application on the tube. If you twirled the color, you heat up all the sides. The color would heat up faster, come off faster, give you a thinner thread. I tend to not rotate that color just to give me a, it just happens a little slower. It's a little easier to control. So I'm very careful when I get to the end of my rake at the thin part of my tube here that I don't uh, heat up my blowpipe too much. I don't want it to get soft there and floppy. I generally start raking around in one direction and then I kind of when I get close to the end like right here okay now is it one more line or two maybe double check oh definitely just one so put it down the center if it was two I would have divided it up different sometimes if you get it too hot here by accident instead of going next to that line I'll flip it over and go opposites north, south, east, west, and then fill those in. But uh, I generally don't do that because I feel it's a little faster going line next to the line you previously did because you kind of preheated that color for yourself. Okay, so I'll just use this same six mil as a foot pedal. Man, a foot pedal is pretty key to have. Let's talk about the Griffin foot pedal. This is a double foot pedal. Uh, it's got an oxygen bypass on it as well, so if you wanted to, uh, while you're on your small plane, run an outer sheath of oxygen, you could keep this knob on slightly on a little, a little thing they got on the back of the pedal. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I know a few people that still don't have pedals that run like Phantoms and Mirages, and frankly, I think they're fucking crazy. Like they save so much money and and gas with the foot pedal and it's just such a useful tool to like oh shit it's too much heat you know like whoo you know what i mean like it's a valuable tool it's just it's pretty much a necessity in my mind the reason i contacted griffin for distributorship is they're definitely og they've been around as long as as long as i've known pretty much and uh I've met Scott a few times. Uh, he's sponsored the Great Canadian Glass Gathering in the past. And he's, uh, yeah, generally all around, super awesome company, made in the USA, and uh, good people to deal with. Uh, it's everyone on my sponsor list. Good, honest people I like to work with. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just realized we forgot to put background music on today. I have to talk more. So, making these cups, I just kind of do a series of Maria's, thinning the wall. And see, now I've just got this slight difference in the wall here. I'll just heat up right in between there, clean off my marble pad quickly. I'll give it just a slight puff there. What I'm going for is a straight wall vessel slight puff there, like so, drop down to the marble pad, and just make, make it nice and straight walled, turn like robot, not easy getting no. a perfect marble. It's easier when you've got an L marble, <coughs> I should have an L marble, I think I'll be ordering the one from Griffin, that's pretty good. Slight puff, and we'll go for the other end. And uh, I've sold uh, drinkware at markets a bunch over the years, and I gotta tell you, uh, every time I had a cup, a goblet, you know, any kind of vessel that was not perfect, that was the rim was a little bit whatever, oval, and on an angle maybe like 
wobble, whatever. Always the imperfect one sold first for as much money as everyone else. Every time, without fail. Honest to God, every time. So remember that. I do. Um, I always strive for perfection, but when I get to the cusp of it, I, I consider, okay, well, this is, well, this one's a gift for my brother. <laughs> but, flare, done. That's good. <laughs> Well, I love my brother, but I know he'd appreciate it if it looked, and they all do. They appreciate it when it looks handmade. And this one obviously is with the design put into it. But if it looks too perfect, well, they might as well spend a buck fifty at IKEA and buy a foreign-made glass from China. You know? That's what you know. If that's what they want to go with. And I've, I've had people say that to me too at markets. I can buy that glass. Like that for three dollars at IKEA, and I just look at them and I kind of smile. And what, do you, what do you say? Like, oh, congratulations, you country fucking bumpkin. That's pretty cool. Anyway, I'm gonna give it a slight pop here, and then we'll do one more marver. Like that, like that. Keep the end, we'll flatten it. I wanted to focus, we'll do another one right away here after a safety break. So, wherever, keep the bottom from uh, the, the bottom always kind of expands as the glass kind of gathers. If you have, uh, I had it heated up the wall a bit, so I was getting a bit of a bulge there at the end. So flatten it, rotate, flatten. Rotate flat, rotate flat. Gonna spin it as you rotate and flat. That'll do it. So now hunting onto flat surfaces is never a really good idea. It can be done, though. So you always make sure you have a hot, super hot, punty, super wet both sides. No acute angles. Work it in real good. And then you're it's like you're almost guaranteed if you have an acute angle there, that's gonna crack. Guaranteed, yeah. <laughs> In the kill. Happens every time. Yeah. Yeah. So as that stiffens up, I'll just warm up the other side. So I do the bubble trash technique for my rims here. It smells like something's cooking. Is that your flesh, bro? Yep. Well, you smell good. No, I think someone's cooking upstairs. Teenagers. Smells like pop tarts. <laughs> I don't think it's pop tarts. Okay, so I do a quick flare, and then I grab my shears, and I get it nice and hot, and I just shear around. I start at the low side, and I just shear all the way around. Sometimes yeah, you can't get all the way around because it's not hot enough. You just have to reheat it. <coughs> get my towel ready. This is a little off here, so we're gonna saw straight down. Just keep turning to straighten it. Looks like I used black was the color. So now there's quite a bit happening here on the lip as I do it, but one important thing I learned. Uh, from Robert Mickelson on the lip forming is that if it's uneven, heat up a little bit of glass, like an inch or a, or a half inch, and then paddle the edge, and you will push any unevenness into the wall of the vessel, away from the lip. That is such a key fucking thing, I tell you. And then I go again, I got my paddle still, I'm going to use a little bit of centrifugal force to open it up here. I'm not using my jacks quite yet. Just open it up just with the spinning. And again, get the paddle on it. Because I've got, see how it's like a good half inch of hotness? Paddle that up. Now for getting close to the final shaping, I've got my jacks ready. These have been uh, waxed a little bit on the ends. You don't want to use them without. Get that hot again. And it's basically, you just hold it up the top of the vessel like that. 
and flare it out to a nice round angle. It's basically uh, holding two reamers at once. One last paddle for me just to make sure. I have a look-see and that'll do for, for the brother-in-law. So that's going to go in the kiln and then I'll bring it out to remove the punty after. So into the AIM. This is the AIM 99. It's funny, it's actually the 99 LSD. <laughs> awesome, I love it. Well, it's a great kiln, I think it's 10 by 12 by 12. Uh, the beautiful doors now, new and improved brick doors. Uh, digital annealer with programs, easy to operate, but the brick door, so important, the brick flaps. Uh, those cloth flaps, they're just not as good. Your temperature variation here at the front of the kiln is extreme. You're losing hundreds of degrees up front. So this brick kind of helps prevent that. And the bottom doors are brick too. So kind of much better, you know, with one handle I could put it in the corner. So those work pretty good. If you're in Canada, I'm a distributor for AIM Kilns. Let me know, I can help bring that up for you. What you doing? Bending a fixable joint. So it's going to need a downstand percolator, I guess. You're going to stick that in, weld it, and then stick the joint over it? Sure. Uh, yeah. It's a two-part direct inject process. Yes, sir. That's the way I do it, too, most often. Yeah. Hey, my computer turned itself off. I guess that doesn't matter, though. I can't tell if we're still working or not. We could plug it in, though, somewhere. Can we? Whatever. It doesn't matter. I think we're, I think we're still working. We'll just we we'll just can't check the chat. So let's let's do it. let's plug it in. Then we can check the chat. Let's unplug the camera or that one. That one's fully charged. Thanks, Lieutenant Dan. Let's have a hash talk. Hash it up. Hash it in. Let me begin. I hear the Apple hum. It's working. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I always have a little meditative moment with that when my computer turns on in the morning. I don't know, it pleases me. I think they did research on that. Oh yeah. First thing in the morning I hear that. When I turn it on, I'm like, ah, all is right. I have a MacBook, everything's good. So this is a, a great bowl of hash that my friend Richie gave me. Thanks, Richie. It's fucking awesome, full melt hash. And we've just been rubbing it all over the nail. Works pretty good. The old hash carb cap. What's going on? Oh, it's on. I was like, it doesn't seem to be working. Oh, yeah. It's, it's working. It's just too smooth. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I got an appointment with a, uh, she's actually a dance instructor and a yoga teacher. Sweet. And I'm going on uh, Tuesday to learn new stretches, basically for glass blowers. So cool. uh, I've, since the car accident, I've had a real massive amount of pain and stiffness from just the, from here to basically my shoulder blades to that zone, yeah. it's just like, it's always a wait. I haven't had a full night, I've had like two full night sleeps in, in months. And uh, so anyway, it's kind of limiting the hours of work and kind of affecting my life greatly. So anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to this appointment to this lovely lady, and I'm gonna learn some of these new stretches, and I thought maybe in the future episodes I will make a little insert oh, where I'm gonna do a little day. film and pass it on, because it's a real, uh, occupational hazard here, all this, this uh, repetitive motion, weight out front, uh, you know, the car accident Not definitely sure. yeah, affected it, but, it, you know, like, now, you know, she's going to teach me how to stretch those muscles, so, fucking A. Okay, let me log into my computer, and we'll find out if, if, if it's still working, because we could, we could, maybe it's not working. Look at this handy dandy thing here. Can you, you guys just like looking in a mirror. I'll be like, so that's the video device. Pretty stoked on that. Oh. No 
volume allowed. Well, it looks like it's still working. Good. Hey, y'all. Got my computer back on. It must have just timed out or something. Okay, let's do another trailing rig. I feel safer. Can you, oh, you're a darn glass up here. I was gonna say, can you grab me a beer, but. No, that would be inappropriate. We're not glass here. Okay, so pulling the point. Just gonna turn that glass as nice and regularly as possible. I really want an even heat base. You get a nice straight thick point. Oh, we got a new camera angle setting up here. Lieutenant Dan on the job. So I am planning on uh, soon come having a nice little supply, glass supply shop. Be offering uh, clear glass, tools, kilns, color, all that pizzazz, jazz. Okay, so I got the point pulled. Might as well just keep it hot while I'm there. Let's use some of this. Oh, that's blue cheese. Again, that's that's too nice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's go with uh, let's go with crayon yellow. I'll show you how we work the crayon yellow. And still, I'm guilty of a few bubbles, but nothing like this torch over here. Well, that's one of the nice things about having this Red Max is uh, it's beautiful. Oh, sorry, the, of the GTT is the way it uses on colors. Maybe. Okay, so I'm basically going to get the tube hot and I'm going to hold it here and I'm going to trail this on like this. That's the way I set up. I kind of notice my elbows locked into my body for support and I'm just going to turn this handle kind of slowly. I can get reflective heat real quick and easy but it's parallel to the big plane. I'm going to look here a little more. So with the crayon you need to work away from your torch head so the flame cools down. So, a little time. Go up the slope, and again, I'm going to stop right there. Oh, paddle. Paddle. There we go. That part just, it's, it's sprung off one too many times for my life, you know what I am. So now we can just get started, right here. Crayola trailing rig, no problem. So I'm turning my left hand pretty slow, because my color is so hot. So I've removed my color, now I'm going to speed up. Kind of a dipping in and out thing here. Okay, we'll stop there. Let's just get the paddle ready. Okay, switching colors. Well, I've got some of this lemon drop here. Let's just go to lemon drop. Good news, I was seeing North Stars getting close to cadmium production again. They had to install a ventilation system over there. That must have cost a lot. Hoping the color is not going to increase too much in price. Wishful thinking. So, there we go, just down the shoulder a little bit. I don't go too far down the shoulder, but man, I'm a cheap Dutchman. I like getting every inch of the glass I can. 
I've got my six mil up in front of me here. I'm going to be placing a couple big orders for glass and tools soon. If you're uh, in the neighborhood, like Gremlin there, and friends, how about you contact me? Let me know any tools you need brought up, what glass you might need. Getting close to placing my first orders for stock. Planning on stocking one of the old buses full of all the supplies and tools. We'll have that at parked at the glass gathering. Mobile glass supply shop. Oh yeah. When we do the great convoy, bring that bus along. Oh my. On the note of buses, I'm going to be doing a bus update video, I think on Monday, maybe Tuesday. He's been working hard out there in the cold. So again, I'm just going one, and now if it got too soft uh, at the end here, that's where the, on my blowpipe, right here, if that gets too soft, what I'll do is skip a bunch, I'll go to the other side. But, man, it does get too soft. So, let's break it out. One last one. And that is the trail and rake design. So you saw me make a cup today. Why don't I just set this aside and we'll have a quick safety break and let's do that exactly again. We'll do the whole trail and rake again. I think that, that's where the money is. We'll do another cup episode after the flare in the lip that's a whole nother beast Just pull a point that's a nice rig you got going on there bud yeah I'm getting a little frustrated because I accidentally popped the hole so oh. I'm trying to flatten the bottom and I can't oh. get any pressure well then you just gotta stop and change your uh, order of things I would suggest no yeah I just accidentally you got it now I, well, I popped the hole, so I did it wrong. So it's well, kind of a mistake. I can't go back. Well, yeah. what you could do is keep on. I would suggest what I would have done is uh, finish the joint then, and then put a plug in the joint, and then flatten the bottom. Right? Yeah. And you got your seal. It's not quite as round and easy to turn, but I guess what I'm going to do. Not a good idea. idea. Yeah. Complete the thing, and then flatten it. All right. Well, another little hash. Holy rattler. Oh, oh leave guys. I'm just kidding. Again. It's tough on the ears. Y'all should wear earplugs, probably. I got my ears cleaned this week. That's what's new. I wanted to suggest to anyone who can hear my voice to go get your ears cleaned at the doctor someday. If you got any kind of wax in your ear, it is amazing. You'd be surprised at what comes out of there. I'm a working guy and out in the dirt and in the you know, everything, right? So and I'm a, and I make a lot of wax. Golly, ear orgasms, man! I tell ya. Okay, are you all right with them watching you do this, bro? Yeah. Let's see it. Just gonna put in this down spell.
guys in the chat are saying that you do more shows. What I'm gonna do is bus updates such as short techniques, uh, tool of the week, tech of the week. That's what that's their plan. Nice short edited videos. Hard to do one a week because I do have a life uh, other than the show. You know, it's not my main line. I've got to blow glass. i got to build buses, man. I'm busy out here. <laughs> At least I'm not milking goats no more. I miss the goats, but golly. There's a goat. Every morning. Oh, it's an evening. Yeah, yeah. I'll go get myself a beer. So you pulled some glass off there, you had a bit of extra? Yeah, I accidentally <laughs> made my Maria too big. Yeah, and it was kind of like overlapping, yeah. so I connected kind of it all the anyway. Time. Yeah, and I did the exact same. Yeah. Just kind of pulling some off, so and nice, it off, even yep. form, as even as I can. Yeah. Sometimes I'll puff it out with a reamer in the hole, and oh, yeah. it out that way. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I'll tear it off. Yeah, you're really good at these. How long have you been torching? Uh, two years, actually. I just saw that. Man, I might not be able to call you a newbie anymore. I know, it's getting to that point. Almost. 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 Pretty close. <laughs> Alright, well I think I'm ready to trail. Let's get this camera back to another angle. Thanks Dan, that's fucking awesome camera work, bud. It's awesome having help out here. We're going to be going on the road, hopefully in a couple weeks. Well, it's Christmas in a couple weeks, so maybe right after. We're going to do a show from the Gremlins Glass Shack. Okay, what color is next? Let's get that figured out. I've got this uh, this amber purpley thing. We'll use that. And then this amber purpley thing here. That looks good. Okay, so let's go over this one more time, shall we? Shall I face the camera a little bit like this? Okay. So again, the background glass must be very warm. We're gonna get a good coat of heat into that. Don't have to heat this up ahead of time. Just that. It's got a stick. So thinking like way down here, get this really hot. Glowing. A little soft even. Oh, we listen to Old Man Ludicky right now. With permission. God damn it, YouTube. With permission. Shit bus. It's good man, Old Man, old man Ludicky. He's not that old. Old Man Ludicky. Is that a trade secret I shouldn't tell anyone? He's actually a young fella. He sure is good on the banjo, though. I just love going to the merch table after local shows, grab a CD, meet them after the show, ask them if I can play their music on my show, hells yeah is the usual answer. So, trailing off. So let's not stop. I'm not going to stop. Here we go. We'll see if it springs off the end there. Now I could put that end in the flame like that. That would help prevent it. See that? That angle I just did? That's actually a little faster way of keeping things good there. Oh, I'm learning something here on my own show. That was a good move. See that? Put the end in the flame. Okay, so it just came off the clear. I always remove that bit. Pull up the next one. Back plane this. See, it's not going to spring off now. I don't even have to paddle it. I'm so good, I don't have to paddle. So, wrap it on. 
I try not to overlap. I don't go left and right. I just try to get one consistent string all the way down without crossing swords, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean? It's all in a line. So, just, I got one little blob there. See that hot spot? I'm just going to take and pull this off. There it goes. There. That's a little better. Get another piece of six metal. Oi! You got to be careful of the beard there. I had to tip the toe. Working on my color stock. So now we're gonna do the wrap, the ring. Here we go. Note the flame is kind of ahead of where the rod is. That's why I'm kind of moving around a little bit. Gotta be hot to move it, you know? There we go. I hope to see a bunch of examples of people's trail and rake. This is a great thing to do for Christmas ornaments. I did this design for Christmas ornaments for years. You do a much smaller prep. It's like a couple inches long. You can just fume it. You can wrap clear on it. You can rake it. Those look great. Wrap like scraps of color. This is where you can use up all your scrappage. If I had uh, that Chinese tube that would often break when you introduce it to the flame until I figured out you got to kill it first, I would pick up those big shards and I would pull stringer, or pull it in a little kind of thicker rod, not stringer, and I would trail and rake that shit. I'd just pick up shards and trail and rake it onto pieces. That's how you use a lot of scrap glass. Really good technique if you're low in supplies. You could take a piece of gun mount glass. You could smash it out of a TV. You could tr you could wrap that around glass and rake it. I think that's what the ancient Egyptians were doing. Smashing their TVs. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. It looked like gun mount to me there. <coughs> Moldavite. Yeah, I've got a piece of that here somewhere. I don't know if that would wrap and rake very well. Maybe. Why not? I think it wouldn't be as cool as just sticking it in here. <laughs> Nothing as cool as that. Alright, so there's another example. Let's take this one to the finished cup. And then we'll finish the show right there. Okay, so let's shape a cup again. Clear off my little marver pad. Get my little punky ready. So, let's get a bigger flame here. There we go. So, punty up. I always do the Maria closest to this handle, uh, to, the, to my glow tube. So we'll just heat that up. I give it a twist in one direction. Every time I do this little heat up, I give it a little twist. So a little twist. Kind of blow out a bit of a Maria, a little gather. I'll let that heat up a bit. Go right next to it. Twist the other way this time, and I'll pop this one as wide as the other one, maybe a bit more. Like the previous one, like that. Come down for a marver. Almost there. No sense marvering cold glass though, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Give it a little pop. 
Nothing makes glass rounder than a little bit of a uh, puff on the... Just a little... Oh, oh. Oh, get the bottom. My buffy's getting soft, nope. So I'll just kind of put it on a right angle. Try to grab the glass. We'll get one last spin out of it. Oh, in the opposite direction. Like that. bottom, but I kind of blew it a little wider than the previous glass so I can marker it down. Just get a little termination there. Wash that out. Okay, now I just want to marble it down a little bit more. I can use gravity to get things headed the right direction there. Like that. Come down. This finishes the, uh, the shaping. We've got a nice straight wall vessel. Now I'm just going to heat up the very bottom. Now here if I have too much heated up the wall, then I'll get a little bulge right out again. Just from the, the pushing against the table, gathering the glass. So I just kind of got to get, the, get it hot at the end here. Come down, rotate as I flatten. Flatten, flatten, flatten. Looks about it. Looks pretty good. Another thing is a great way to do it is have like a paddle and right at the flame there. and You know it's straight then. Okay, so again, the way I've been doing these lips, you could use a claw. I find a claw less dependable, so I get a really soupy, punty connection. Let that harden up. Okay, now we'll do a bubble trash. The left side is still soft, so that's tricky. Pull that off, use another handle. And we can pop it with just getting it hot, or I can reach in and grab that, and just kind of thin out that glass. There it's popped. Pull off the high side. I prefer shearing than swiping. I, I, get, I think I get a better result. Get this hot just for a second to straighten that out while I get my reamer. So just chewing up my handle using gravity and the spin. Pausing when I needed to to get it to sag in the right direction. So now I just need to get the rim ready. So first a flare and now I can see what's uneven on that rim. Now I'll get my shears, get it hot one more time, and I'm just going to shear right around. A little pause there, it's getting too stiff. And then one last snip, and it falls to the table. You get a much cleaner uh, edge with that. Now again, the Robert Nicholson advised, push any unevenness away from the rim and into the wall. So here I heat up an inch. This is the trick of the night, folks. And you paddle that just like that. So I pushed any unevenness. Now the trail and rake, I've got color But by pushing it evenly, a few times, we get rid of that. Now the jacks, and the jacks just ride usually up top, and it's just two reamers at once is the trick. There it is. 
And now, it gives you a perfect rim. Looks good that way. Looks good. Tiffany, that's French for it's finished. Okay, so uh, back in the kiln. And I think that is where we're going to call it for the show. There's a few examples of some trailing, right? Now, don't tell my family. Those are all my Christmas gifts this year because it's a surprise. Okay? Don't be telling my mama. Ruin the surprise. All right. So again, I want to remind you to go check out VancouverSeedBank.ca. Uh, you know what? I'm going to order some seeds there soon myself. And uh, I'll tell you all about it after I get them. Because if I tell you now, you might order the same ones, and they might not have what I want. So I'm not going to tell you what I want. You have to guess. So go buy everything you need quick, because I'm about to make an order. All right. Uh, now, I want to thank Kind Selections. I want to thank Beard Brothers Society, Shatterbeard, and Skunk and Panda, as well as Valley Pure Distillates. These guys got the best hash in Canada, and you should check them out and order some up. Different levels of documentation needed, uh, from medical documentation to not so much. Uh, so contact them, see what each of them needs uh, in order for you to get hash in the mail. Now I want to thank uh, Tim Powers, Glass, he sends me tubing. Uh, I got some around here somewhere. There's some right there, Tim Powers Tubing. Uh, he's a new start company. I'm proud to support him. He's such a good man. And man, he's turning out to be a great artist as well. Look at that jazz. Uh, Aim Kilns, uh, Griffin Glass Tools, Remo Nutrients. Ooh, which reminds me. We got all these pre rolls. Get to work, man. I've been slacking. I got a beer sponsor, 12 Kings Pub. They're in Vancouver at 12 Kingsway. And uh, don't forget to check out the show at cannabroadcasting.com. This was really fun. We'll do it again next week. Take care, y'all. We got one, at least two episodes or something before Christmas. We'll be there. We're going to have some fun. All right. Ciao.